Everyone's been talking about the ongoing Tory Lanez trial as witnesses have started to take the stand. Megan Thee Stallion would take the stand as a witness for the prosecution, making this the first time she's spoken in detail about the night with Tory Lanez allegedly shot her in the foot back in the summer of 2020. During her testimony, Megan said that the assault was the result of an argument she had with Lanez and her former best friend and assistant, Kelsey Harris. According to the Los Angeles Times on the stand, she said, I can't even be happy. I can't hold conversations with people for a long time. I don't feel like I want to be on this earth. I wish he would just have shot and killed me if I knew I would have to go through this torture. Now, ever since this incident was made public, sides have been chosen, leading us to wonder if the campaign Protect Black Women is just a talk in our community. And are black women more loyal to black men? Today we have our company hype analyst Yamanika Saunders and Pierre calling to the show to give their thoughts and reactions. Now, I want to give a little update first just to kind of set the tone for people that may not be aware. So right now, we've currently heard from Megna Stallion on the stand. And today, her former best friend, Kelsey Harris, will also hit the stage. As I mentioned um, previously, you know, in the intro, Megna Stallion lately, you know, her recent statements were, hey, I wish that I would have just been shot and killed if I knew that I had to go through this torture. So I want to start with you, Yamanika. You know, I, I want to get your reaction and just your thoughts on this trial. I mean... I the, the question has always been like, has she been shot? Was she shot? Which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, th that's something that can be determined whether she was shot or not. I think um, that it has shown very obviously that there is a, a very consistent divide and not only just the hip hop community, but the black community um, amongst men and women. Um, the There is a lack of, of, of protection, love, and consideration when it comes to Black women, and especially in the midst of violent acts. Um, and it, it's quite sad to see it unfold. And it's quite sad um, to see this play out uh, for somebody who is, you know, trying to be an example of women empowerment and, uh, you know, esteem for young girls and things of that nature, and someone who just recently lost their mother. So, you know, I really feel bad for Megan during all of this time. Absolutely. Pierre, let me bring you in. I know there's a lot of layers to this, um, but, you know, just with the recent updates and everything going on, I'd love to get your reaction and just your overall thoughts on this trial. I have many of the sentiments that Yamanika has, but one. Um, when you start lying from the rip and now you're asking somebody to believe you, you know, you put it in your situation. When she first said she wasn't shot, she stepped on some glass. Right there is the lie. If she would have said that right then and there, hey, he shot me, we can move forward with that. But for her trying to protect him, which made us believe, okay, maybe she's from glass. Now it's turning to know he shot me. Well, if you start off with a lie, you're putting yourself behind, you know, the eight ball to try to be believed. And some people won't believe you now, you know, and I'm not saying she wasn't shot. But the point of it, you know, you said you weren't shot, and then you said, no, I am shot. Well, you shot, you're not shot, what's shot? Now, I believe she was shot. Um, so and it's not going to be hard to find out if, find if she was shot or not. They go back to the place where the car was at. Um, you can see, you know, with a gun, you can see uh, bullet holes in the ground. You shoot, shoot at her feet a couple of times. shot her five times. So you can see some scratches in the ground. But time has passed. She tried to save him. And now it's trying to get back into reverse because the city is coming after them, making them talk. Because I know she's quite sure she doesn't want to talk about it no more. But the city is now suing it and it's putting her into it. And she feels very uncomfortable. So, you know, it started off on, on a bad note. He shouldn't have shot her in the first place, but. You know, she lies. I didn't get shot. Now it's getting turned over to something else. So, if I could just, I just huh? want to interject something, and it's not, and, <clears throat> and it's to illuminate. And forgive me today, I'm not. I am under the weather. Oh. Um, it, it is to illuminate a point. You know, I've been in a situation um, where I was being attacked by a black man, and um, the situation turned quite violent. And when it was asked upon me why I didn't call the police or why I didn't get the police involved. The first thing that ran through my mind is that this man was at such a heightened fever pitch in his aggression towards me and his demeanor that I instantly thought if I call the police and the police show up and see him as a black man at this level of anger and violence that he would be killed. So I think what we don't consider is 
how many times Black women are in situations that are quite violent at the hands, not that they can't be at the hands of other men, because this always becomes a point whenever I talk about the femicide rate for Black women being every five to five and a half hours, Black women are being murdered. That is a disproportional rate, rate to any other group of women who are being murdered, most of them at the hands of their partner, domestic partner. We don't take in consideration how much consideration Black women take when they're in violent situations, especially with Black men, to not only think about how they're going to protect themselves, but also how they're going to protect the, the man that is at that time their attacker or their aggressor. So I think there should be a lot more consideration about the, the mental state of a Black woman whenever she's in a violent situation with a Black man. Absolutely. Now, I, I want to actually get some, some clarity on that. Um, Pierre, I'll definitely let you talk about it. I just want to make sure I add in. Yeah. 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 Um, so I love to, to actually read uh, Magna Stallion because she did speak on this. So just to give a little bit of backstory. So she does describe the argument between her, her and Tory Lanez that happened inside the vehicle. First, it started about them being intimate with one another. Then it's gotten to their careers and them kind of going, you know, head to head. She said at that point, that's when she could tell like things, you know, switched for him. So this was her statement on why she didn't um, call the or let the officers know, you know, what exactly happened. So she said, at this time, we were at the height of police brutality. I felt if I said this man had shot me, they might shoot first and ask questions later. I don't feel safe in the car. I don't feel safe with the police. She then would add, first of all, in the black community, in my community, it's not really acceptable to be cooperating with police officers. She also says this whole situation in the industry is a big boys club. It's like I'm telling on one of y'all friends. Now you all are about to hate me. Pierre, I'm going to come to you because I know you wanted to, to add to that as well. But I love to ask, do you think there's more of a loyalty that comes from black women, you know, than what we see from black men? Because here here's a case where, you know, she was the victim and she said, hey, I, I you know, even though I am the victim, I don't want to see this man get hurt in the possibility of what we've seen with police brutality. Pierre, I'll come to you. Yes, I love my black women. I've only been with black women. My baby mama's a black woman and my uh, wife is a black woman. So I love black women. But I can't believe you wouldn't tell me you, you, you yeah, women, black women, black women might need some therapy. Because what you're telling me is you're willing to take an ass whooping to save another guy who don't give a damn about you. A guy shoots you, shoots at you, and you want to be like, you know what? I don't want the police to hurt him. He's about to kill you, maybe. He's beating up Yamanika. Yamanika in a fight with somebody. He's beating her ass and shit. She got a fight and struggle with this dude. But then she goes in there and say, you know what? I don't want you to get hurt by the police. That man didn't give a damn about your life. And you're worried about his life? Really? What if you have children? Do you just say, man, keep, you're, you're, opening, you're letting the door be open to put, put many an ass whooping. If he knows he, you ain't going to call the cops on him, ass whooping is coming towards you. So I am not a black woman. So maybe you black woman can tell me more why you want to get your behinds whooped constantly to save a black man. Is it that, is it that great? He ain't willing about saving you. He may kill you. Right. I'll know. tell you exactly what's going on here. The problem is, and this is why I'm so vocal and I'm such a loud, big Bertha with one of my cats. Shout I out see to in the back. And I got two cats because there is a time in which black women are sort of indoctrinated into this idea that we need to be loyal. And I do believe that Black women, to answer the question, we are disproportionately more loyal to Black men than Black men are loyal or protective to Black women. Mm -hmm. Black men divest out of the community at a disproportionate rate to Black women. You'll be hard pressed to find Black women who are looking at the stats of just available Black men who are healthy, not in prison, not on drugs, not doing this, and say, maybe we should open our options out to other men of other races. It's hard for Black women to do that. Black women still haven't done that. That shows our loyalty. We also know that we have been driven in our heads that we have to protect our sons. We have to protect our fathers. The police are killing them. The police are abandoning them. We say Black men's names who have been killed by the police so much so that we ignore Black women who have been killed by the police so much so that we've had to create a campaign go say her name just to remind us to also talk about the black women who have been murdered. So let's also understand that we are going into a new, very toxic environment of massage noir. We have a lot of men who have, and this has been the influx of these Samuelites, these Kevin Samuel men who constantly have a problem with women, constantly these men who are, I'm going my own way and women are this and this and that. You got red pill niggas, you got Manusville niggas. This like, 
an uptick in the way that men vehemently hate women, especially black women, continue to say that we don't take any accountability, continue to act like we are the problem and the scourge at all times, and also understand that black women in the attempt to reach black men, to see where they're coming from, we are also now attacking one another in hopes that we just win in Rome, do as the Romans do. So let me, let me, this, well, one, let me say, I think this is a great conversation. Um, I'm really happy to be having it with both of you because I feel like both of you give the truth and, and a lot of insight to this. So Pierre, let me come back to you because I think you posed a, a, gr a great question. Um, so let me ask this. Do you think the, the campaign Protect Black Women hurts our community or helps our community more? And I'll try to try to explain that just a little more, because as what you said, you know, there's a, a strong loyalty that black women have for black men. And it's almost as if, you know, that slogan can be saying, hey, we want that exact same thing. Do you think that will hurt us more if we have such a strong loyalty where we're really willing to put ourselves in harm's way? And then also on the other side, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll start there. It's, it's so much. I'll start there. Do you do you think that, you know, the, the protect the campaign protect black women? hurts us more or you know what what exactly is is in that does it divide us more than it brings us together no 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 women is black women deserve to be protected that, you know, that's the whole point they should be protected and you should be protected against black men who are bringing violence to you also and you should have the mindset to say hey man i get protecting them black women want to protect a black man but in certain scenarios not when you whooping your ass and shooting at you Come on now, if, he, if he's like, he, you know, I'm making up, maybe he's done something legal and the cops come in and, you know, you might want to make sure he, after he is at your house or you may stand up for his personality on the court, you know, on the uh, stand. I get that. But if a black man is bringing violence to you and you're a black woman, all that loyalty you need to get out the window. Now, you can sit there and say what you want to about now. I got to stay with him. You ain't going to shoot me and beat me up. And I'm going to still say, no, I don't want to call the police. My eyes swollen up. It's a mindset. We got to get rid of those guys. Those are violent men. They need to be in jail. Now, they need to be in jail where other good men on the street can get an opportunity to get with a good woman who's taking that abuse and shouldn't be taking that abuse. So that's how I look. Yeah, Yamanika, let me, let me phrase that question uh, to you as well. And I, I want to, because like I said, it, this is so much, right? There's, there's so many layers to this. Um, there are just so many facts, so many things that we're still waiting to unfold. But Yamanika, let me bring that same question to you. The campaign Protect Black Women, do you feel that like it's been hijacked a little bit to kind of divide us as opposed to, you know, bringing us together, which is what I feel like that's what it was created for. Hey, we're seeing this divide. Let's come together to protect one another. So, you know, do you think it's been hijacked? And if so, do you think it should be more so of like protect us as a people, as a community, as opposed to, you know, because it seems to be dividing us. And I'll, you know, in this case with Tory Lanez and Magna Stallion, nobody's focused on the truth anymore. Everybody's focused on Hey, if you take Tories, you don't like black women, or if you, you know, take Megan, you don't like black men, and it seems to be more a divide than a, you know, bringing together. What are your, what are your thoughts, Yamanika? I love to. Damn, damn. I know it's. it's I. <laughs> I, I understood you. I understood you, Symphony, and it is complicated, and it's unfortunate that a lot of times uh, the things that happen in the media. Uh, we, they also have to be an example of what is happening on the lower surface of our just our community, because this is, let's not forget, Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez and their public figures, and there's a whole other circus that's happening there. But I, I think that we keep saying protect Black women because it is, it was surprising to me. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I didn't know Tory Lanez before this. I'm sorry, I wasn't really into whatever he was doing. And Megan Thee Stallion, you know, she was giving me the, the whip waps and what I like. And, and I understood as soon as I saw Megan, I because I understand her and I understand what Black women like that who are powerful and strong and who are telling motherfuckers to back up. And I understand that comes from women who have been beaten down. That comes from the type of woman who has been, you know, she's a big girl, she's tall. You know, we have to remember that in the Black community and Black men will say it themselves, all you got to do is look at the comments section for comedy um, hype. 
They'll tell you a hundred different ways why I don't need to be protected and why I don't deserve a man because I'm fat, I'm overweight, I'm old, I ain't got this, don't no man want me. Like men, these men categorize what protection is for black women based on vanity and aesthetics. And unfortunately, this culture that Kevin Samuels created, where it's post-wall with you're over 25 or 30, if you got kids, unrealistic things that if you are a person living life, you probably will have children. You are going to get, everybody's getting older every day. So they become unrealistic things that women are now trying to figure out. I can't go against these things that are natural to me. I feel unprotected. So more women are being vocal about feeling unprotected, especially in the Black community, because Black women are going to feel it the most because we are a part of a marginalized community. And then the women in that community also feeling marginalized is a double down. We also have to understand that people exploit Black women and Black women's plight. You know, we just had this situation with Trevor Noah when he closed his show out, thank Black women, right? And there was a big hoop de law about that. And people were complaining, oh, Black women are never happy. He thanked Black women. Look how ungrateful Black women were. And while on the one hand, I appreciate Trevor Noah taking the time to say thank you to the Black women, it was the way in which he presented how he understood Black women were showing up in his life as a support system, as his mama, as his auntie putting Vaseline on his uh, face, cleaning him up, supporting him, telling him he's loved, standing in the gap for him, but never in, oh, this Black woman that I love, that I had as my partner, who I find romance in, who I find beauty. So we continue look at black women that we are supposed to be the pillars holding up everybody and no one is there to hold us up we are supposed to accept oppression from everyone be there for everyone and then when it's time for us to cry or be vulnerable or to be treated like women nobody expects us to want to be treated like women and then they wonder why there is a culture of black women who are outspoken, who are independent, who have decided to take care of themselves, because we have to also understand that we are a part of a community as much as these black men want to say whatever they say about black men doing this and doing that. Our community is marginalized. We are not economically showing up in the system. We are not socially showing up in the system. We are still economically and socially disenfranchised. So imagine if black men are having a problem doing what black men need to do or feeling like they're moving forward in the structures of the community or amongst races and society, imagine how Black women are feeling not being able to be protected by the men in their culture. We can't depend on them to be providers for us. We can't depend on them for anything. That's why you have such a large group of independent Black women who are getting their education, being entrepreneurs, buying their own homes, taking care of themselves. There's no protection and no, no case shows this as much as this Megan Thee Stallion because instantly it was conversation about she's lying. He didn't shoot her. Why is she doing this to him? All of these things. Very little has been said about this man who is part of this bigger, larger conversation. And even if at the end of the trial, it is determined that he didn't shoot her, it was the friend, all, all I know is there was a man there and there was a man not showing up in a presence of danger. And we have to also look at that in the Shaquilla Robinson case. Look at this young black woman who is sitting there being beaten on camera. That's how little respect we have for black women, that she is being beaten on camera by other black women, which means black women are also the problem when we don't protect one another. As grown as black men sit there and watch her being attacked and body slammed. And the only offer they ask, they add to the contribution to this situation is why isn't she fighting back? We are in a crisis when it comes to Black women and the lack of respect that Black women are getting, and it is causing Black women to be murdered, killed, die. Absolutely. And I, I appreciate you so much for, for extending that and being able to add in those different examples, because I think you make a great point. Um, Pierre, I'm going to come back to you and kind of wrap us up in this conversation, then I want to open it up for our live studio audience. You know, in this, I, I as someone who has been in a situation where, you know, I was harmed by a man, told, you know, some people about it, they didn't believe me. You know, I understand what protect black women means. I understand how important it is. Um, and that's just what it is. In that same breath, I can't help but also see the continuous divide in our community. The, you know, where it's just like we're constantly being stacked up 
against one another, black men and black women. So I want to ask you, Pierre, what do you think the solution is? Do you think there should be some type of code where we're focused on the truth? Like the truth is what matters the most. What what code or what solution do you think we need? Because unfortunately, we probably will see a case like this again or similar to it. You know, what what do you think the solution is as we round out this conversation, Pierre? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, whatever I say is not going to ride with one side or the other. First of all, like I said, she chose to protect him from the rip by saying he didn't shoot her. Okay, that's the first part. I don't know. You know, I'm not a woman again. She don't want to say that he shot her. If she would have said he shot her, that way we wouldn't be into all this lying, all that begun, boom, the bullets, right? Everything was right then and there. We could have saw it. But she chose not to. When you do that again, it changes the dichotomy of the whole situation. You know, now, you know, she says, I did get shot. Like I just told you. Um, uh, I don't understand, you know, the, 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 you know, the physical dislike for women, to, for a man to put his hand on a woman. I, I don't know, man. I think it's, one of the things I believe is, you know, we don't have real men in the homes no more that um, men are, are, are getting so close to women, women accepting men for doing female behaviors and so forth and, you know, acting softish around them and not manly around them. So then they think of, you know, me and her ain't but equal. I can punch her in the face. You know, I ain't no man. I'm just a dude. I'm equal to her. We do the same thing. We do the same, you know, just so much unmanliness men do around women and women accept it that men feel like they're women sometimes. I mean, you're softer sometimes. They can do that. That's not no big deal. Opposed to feeling like, you know, I'm a man. I don't need to do that. This young lady is not as strong as I am. I don't need to put my hands on her. You know, I don't need to, you know, shoot her or do that. I can, we can have an argument without, you know, being physical. Um, so maybe, you know, I guess really more, you know, unfortunately more men in the house that, that teach men how to be men and not put their hands on women, not be violent to women. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it got, got to be. Um, I don't know how far women push the envelope. I mean, you know, they, they get in men's faces, thinking, oh, he ain't gonna touch me, he ain't put his hands on me. And be, you know, being a man's zone, that's too close. We, everybody don't, everybody's not gonna keep cool. Somebody says, don't ever put your hands on a woman. That doesn't happen all the time. You get, somebody get your face too close, you know, or talking shit. You're like, mm. I say this, we should have an I now, I right now rule. Once a nigga say I right now, lady, bring it down. <laughs> when he say I right now, bring it down. Mm. Rip it up, bring it down at that point. A lot of violence will stop after that. I right now usually falls an ass whooping or shooting. Well, I mean, you know, we only we really debate a lot about whether a man should put his hands on a woman, depending how how much she gets in his space and what words she says to him. And I think that that's unfortunate. But, we, you know, I I will say this. I think the solution for this to be better has to come from black men, you know, because every time I bring this information up to I know a lot of dope brothers, a lot of cool brothers and, you know, that other men respect and things like that. And when I explain to them that there's such a toxic culture over here that they really need to kind of tap into and see what they can do about, they go, well, it's, it's nobody I know, right? And I'm like, well, this is, a, it's a law, it's over here and it's kind of loud. And if you guys could get in here, because those men that we're talking about that are problems to the system, they're not listening to women. Like, no, I could be saying the most profound thing. I could say the things that have the solution and the answers. These men are not going to listen to me no matter what. They are conditioned from the get-go to not like me, to not like my opinion, to not like the fact that I'm independent, that I speak for myself. This sure. is why they con You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like, it really will take a Black man and Black men to come in and change this. And I also want to say this. I think when people constantly say that, you know, are is this just propaganda that's pushing a divide? Because whenever I speak about certain things as a black woman to a black man, he'll go, oh, well, that's just trying, y'all just trying to divide us. Mm -hmm. Who is they? We are presenting the things that are divide. I know, but right, because we like to do that and go, oh, where's well, just the white man trying to divide us? At the end of the day, I'm smart enough to know that the white man obviously does not want black people in a position of power because that's why he keeps us disenfranchised. But aside from constantly blaming him, which gives us no accountability in how we can solve our own insular problems, we also do things that promote this narrative. If you were to go to other cultures and ask them what the relationship was like between black men and black women, they would know to have a conversation that says, we know that black men don't like black women, black men don't want to marry black women, black men don't this, black men don't that. Why do other cultures have that kind of opinion about black people at large? 
because we also promote that information that we don't get along with each other and we don't like each other. Absolutely, and I, I definitely like to add, and I want to open up for our live studios. I think like we just need more empathy in you know in our community and to understand like we are not each other in each other's enemy. If I, as a woman, am saying, "Hey, I am experiencing this," have empathy for me and come, you know, find ways to to help and make that better, and vice versa. I just think. Yeah, we got to stop, like Yamanik, I think you make a great point. Stop blaming they. They is still whoever they are. Let's talk about it in-house to have that discussion so we can figure out. Tiffany, also, I want to say this to be very, very clear because this really sort of puts in my point of what I'm always talking about when these men come into the comments section and they say, I hate Black men. And it's so dismissive and it's so divisive because that's not what I'm talking about. When, when we go to the stats, this is dangerous, this behavior towards black women because it is killing us. There is not an uptick of black women killing black men and the homicide rate for black men going through the roof because these black women are out here with an attitude killing black men. This is directly affecting black women, it's affecting our lives and we are at a danger zone. When we turn on the news, everywhere you turn around, somebody done got shot by their baby daddy. Uh, they killing pregnant women now. They abusing mothers and older women and shit like this. It is run a fucking muck. And black men have to take accountability that they are dangerous to black women. There's no skirting around that. And when you take that responsibility that you are dangerous to black women and see what the fuck is happening in the community, then we can talk. But it's not gonna come from a black woman because they don't respect black women. It has to come from a Pierre or some nigga like that. No, I-, I Some nigga I, like that. <laughs> No, I, I love I love both of you chiming in. I want to open up um, to our live studio audience to get some questions from them. So coming up, we have Kevin Robinson, who is an actor here in Atlanta, Georgia. So I want to open up. First of all, thank you for joining us, Kevin. And of course, you can pose your question and who you exactly wanted to go to. OK, so quick question. If you guys uh, if it comes out that Megan Thee Stallion is guilty where she's lying, how do you feel that the people should respond? How do you feel that the court should respond? How do you think that uh, society and black people in general should respond? If, if Meg Stallion is lying about being shot, damn. yeah, then uh, then she, she should get it whatever the full extent of the law is at that point, man. You know, pay pay court costs and so forth. It's uh, you know, she's turned it into a tizzy. You know, um, you know, her, her playing a victim. If that's you know, if she's lying, you know. <laughs> I, I just don't even want to hope it's that. But yeah, if he's lying, then she should get the court, the law, you know, the furthest extent of the law. As is it, if he's lying, you know, if he did shoot her, Tory shot her, he should get the same thing. Yeah, obviously, if she's lying, you know, there should be repercussions for that. But I, I don't understand how she would be lying. They've already found gun residue. She was shot. They've already determined that. I think for me, if I saw all these brothers getting upset after this point um, with the evidence, it would be like, okay. But it was instantly nobody believed her. Then, then we had, then we found out it was gun residue. Oh, now it's gun residue. Now we're trying to figure out which one of them, because you, you start taking things off the plate. You got to take off the gun now because she has been shot. Now, was it the best friend that did it, or was it Tory Lanez that did it? That I don't know. But I'm glad that we can finally put to rest that she was shot. There was gun residue there. Um, we probably will never know what happened in that car. Um, because, you know, when we start to arguing and doing shit and shit gets quiet, shit gets quiet. But I hope we can determine who shot her. And, um, you know, then we can go, well, she did say Tori shot her. And then we found out the best friend shot her. Then there's questions that need to be answered from that point. Okay, that makes 100 percent. That makes sense. But what I will say, as I agree, she obviously she got shot. But I think the way that she went about it by protecting Mr. Lanes, I think it was the wrong way to go about it. I think we always, of think course. We always, I think we always talk about. Uh... And this is why I tell black women not to do that anymore. When I tell black women not to protect black men like that, I also get attacked from black men saying that I hate black men. I think what you guys are missing, and this is no disrespect to you guys, but as a black woman, it gets very frustrating, is that I keep telling you the reason why black women show up in this way to not call the cops on you guys is because we don't want you to be murdered. 
Then the response says, oh, well, you you don't mind getting your ass beat? What yep. I'm telling you is Black women yep. are not even thinking yep. about that. Black women have been so, sure, we should, but that's not the conversation that is had with Black women. Even if you see this with the- Well, talk with your Black girlfriends and tell them that. Tell your no, Black girlfriends to do that. It, it's you need easy, to tell your Black girlfriends to do that. I'm let me not going to talk to you. We're not going to talk to you. You need to tell your girlfriends to stop it is protecting black men when they shoot and beat you. Pierre, That's what you do. If you don't do that, it's going to work. I can talk all day long over that. you. I don't have a problem with that. Pierre, you got to start talking to I wasn't going to talk to you. You're not talking over. I'm not talking over you. You're talking over. That's number one. That's number one. And this is exactly what the ZDK The black community is where it is. You need to tell your girlfriend. As soon as we have conversations like this, black men get up. You need to tell not, your girlfriend. But also, but understand, but also, but understand, but also that's why you're getting upset about it. Because you're getting upset. You're getting upset. You're getting upset. It's the same yeah. way as when I said that, Pierre. Now I'm you not going to let you finish. You're not going to finish over me. You're not going to finish over me. And that's fine. You're not going to finish over me. I'm going to over talk you. Stop getting your ass beat. We're going to get the phone. Y'all get a chance. We're going to give you a chance to do phone. There's no space for black women to be safe when black women are telling black men how they feel and how vulnerable they are. And then we get antagonized. Then you got these brothers over here laughing. Where can so I speak, man? John, if I can't speak, I'm getting final thought. Hold on. Don't, don't, do that, don't do that, Pete. Don't do that, Pete. Hold on. Black men. That's totally fine. I was talking. You understand? He talked over me. And I'm talking about something that's very serious when I'm talking about domestic abuse and Black women. And I'm not going to sit here, have him talk over me in something that serious and dangerous and the stats show it. And then you got goofball Black niggas over there laughing at Black women in DV cases. It's dangerous. And I'm telling you, and I don't care if he gets mad. When Black men laugh like that and they get mad when Black women talk about the vulnerability and the murder rate for Black women, it's because they're part of the problem and they don't want to hear it. It's dangerous. I don't give a fuck about nobody having no fucking bad feeling like that. I'm a Black woman. Black women are being fucking murdered disproportionately. You don't see Black women out here murdering niggas at the rate that niggas murder Black women. Fuck them. Because if black women were murdering black men at the rate that black men murder black women, they would have a fucking problem. And then to say, because other men also murder, it's okay for them to murder black women is irresponsible. I'm not no fucking clown here to be played with. I'm not some fucking idiot. I told you what it was. It is hard for black women to call the cops on black men because they keep making us feel like every time the cops is involved with them, the cops are killing them for no fucking reason. And instead of black men saying, thank you, black women, for taking these fucking ass whippings, instead of calling the fucking cops on me where I could be murdered, they go, well, why you can't call the cops? Right. So you're going to get blamed one way or the other. If you call the cops on these niggas, they're going to blame you. If you don't call the cops on these niggas, they're going to blame you for getting your fucking ass beat. And if this case is not an example of what black men do, instantly they was like, oh, she lying. Instantly. These niggas think it's the game. Them young black men in there are laughing because they know the only villain they have to worry about is being shot by another black man or maybe the cops. Black women got to worry about being killed by a black man, killed by a black woman, killed by their fucking friends, killed by the fucking police, everybody. You think they worried about me coming to their fucking neighborhood and killing them? They are not. I get tired of this shit. And then black women are disproportionately loyal to a fucking community that doesn't give a fuck about them as we continue to be the backbone of this fucking community getting no fucking respect. And I'm trying to figure out why are black women doing it? Why are you standing here in a community that will shit on you, not respect you, and then when you try to go find something somewhere, some solace, then they laugh at you. It's ridiculous. Black women been doing this shit since the motherfucking dawn of time. We was raped as our foremothers were raped in this fucking country, disrespected by the fucking men. We having high single mother rates, motherfuckers abandoning black women everywhere. Then black women go to help themselves, become entrepreneurs, get educated, take care of their fucking self. And then these niggas still gonna blame you for that and tell you you don't deserve love or fucking companionship or a fucking man. Them. And I'm tired of the shit. 
because I'm a black woman. And that's the shit that happens to black women. And any black man that don't fucking get it, fuck him. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? To say that uh, I agree with you. I actually feel like us as black men um, in partnerships, if, if I'm speaking from a heterosexual uh, point of view, I feel like um, us as black men, we have so much pride, so much ego that that's what we are always dealing out of. Like uh, your partner as a woman, a black woman could check you as a man and you automatically have this guard or you feel like she's trying to emasculate you when honestly she's actually trying to uplift you. She's trying to actually correct some of your, you know, incorrect behaviors or incorrect verbiage. So I, I, I do agree that, you know, I do wake up and my girlfriend, she watches the YouTube crime stuff and we always see that some, some dude done killed his baby mama because she decided to like somebody else's Instagram post or, you know, just something out of the, out of the woodworks. I, I, I actually do feel that. And honestly, you're talking to a person who I don't believe in religion. I'm very spiritual. And I always tell, you know, the, the gentleman around me, symphony around me, I always tell, and even uh, Leah behind me, I would tell people like, I believe God is a woman because if I look at every man in here, nobody can create life. That's a woman's thing. Like she can bear life and she can take it away. So I do believe that America was built and the world was built on a woman's back, so to speak. Uh, when we actually look to see who we are as real people and where we come from. Well, I appreciate that, young brother. And I, I mean, that really makes me feel <clears throat> a lot better. So I thank you for taking the time to add that to the conversation and it's uh, truly respected. No problem. Okay, so on that note, actually what I wanna do, I, I just wanna go ahead and pause things here because I think it's a beautiful thing to have two opposing views where we're able to have this conversation because it's a needed conversation in our community. And I think the biggest lesson from it is we are not each other's enemies. I think there's a lot of room, um, a, lot of, a lot of space for us to grow. And I hope that this conversation just shows like, Yes, it can get very emotional. Yes, you know, there's a lot of things to be felt, but I think we have to learn to come together. So I'm going to go ahead and pause things here. And I just want to put it back on the audience. I want you guys to take this and really take it home. Really think about it. Have these conversations at home. How do we come together as a people and protect one another along the way? We do not have to look at each other as the enemies. Let's stop talking about what they're doing to us. What can we do to help move us forward? So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Thank you so much to everybody joining us. Justin, Kevin, thank you so much. Pierre, Yamanika, I appreciate you. And Comedy Hype, I specifically want to thank you for allowing these conversations. It's needed in our community. And I hope that we move forward and come together as a people. We are not each other's enemies. Black men, I love you. Black women, I love you. We are one. We are together. We're fighting the same fight. Let's come together and do that together. So on that note, for Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.